Thanks so much for checking out this message from LifeGate Church. We hope that God uses this message to encourage you and help you grow deeper in your faith. Ready for the word this morning? For those online, I encourage you to pray with us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day and the opportunity to celebrate the birth of Jesus. As Hannah said, the gift that the people didn't, they didn't expect Jesus to look like that. But he's come as our saviour and as our Lord, born as a baby, grew to be a man, died for us, rose from the dead. And God, on this day, we want to say thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The gift, the gift. I received a gift uh, recently. It wasn't a, a Christmas present. It was a birthday present from Christy and Andrew. I had a bit of um, back pain. You can hear the vibration. And what you do, Joel, give me, come up here. I need a volunteer. We'll bring your hat. How cool is this hat? Who knows uh, Dude Perfect? Does anyone know? You put it on. Does anyone know Dude Perfect? Check this out. That's a cool birthday present. Now, Joel, can you just sort me out, please, brother? And so what you do with this, yes, that's good. Yes, that's a bit higher. Yes, like that. Very, very good. And if you want to, there's a couple of other attachments if you really want to get into. I found some knots that I never knew I had knots for. It's a really good present. Who likes getting... Keep going, brother. Who likes um, getting presents on Christmas Day? Like, who's got a really cool present already this morning? Let's have a yell out. What, what, some of the kids, what have you guys got already? Acacia, what have you got so far? I've got a new bed. you got a new bed? Wowza. Someone on this side of the room. Present. you got a puppy for Christmas. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yes, hand there. A Lego set. Last one. Emma, what did you get? Fidgets. Whatever they are. Cool. Fidgets. All right, buddy, you're done. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, Joel. Now, who likes getting presents? Who likes getting presents? The greatest present of all is Jesus. I, I, I want to give you five things about presents this morning. Here's the first one. Presents are... Or gifts are an act of love. When we give a gift, we give them because we love somebody, because we care about somebody. It's not something that's earned. That's the second thing. Gifts aren't earned. They're not like a wage where you work, and then as a result, you're given a gift because of your work. We might show appreciation for work, but it's not connected to a wage. It's given out of a loving heart. That's the second thing. Gifts are not earned. The third thing is that gifts cost the giver. When you give a gift, you buy it or you might pass it on. You, you might be given a gift and then you go, you know what, I'm going to re gift this. And by the way, what's wrong with pegs for Christmas? What's wrong with pegs? You know how you get gifts and no, and you, and you go, what am I going to do with that? And you stick it in the shelf and you never... Who's ever got a gift that you've never ever used? Now, our pegs are better than that. Amen? I had an idea for Christmas. I had an idea for Christmas this year. Michelle's been cleaning out the, uh, the cupboards and the kitchen cupboards and all the stuff, and we found some uh, gifts that my mum had bought us over the last 17 years of marriage. So I had this brilliant idea, let's, let's re-gift it and give it back to her for Christmas. <laughs> what do you think of that idea? No. And, and my wife Michelle said, Nathan, if you do that, I'm not going to Christmas this year. I'm not going. So, so, so we're not doing that. When you buy someone a gift, it costs you something. The fourth thing about gifts is that gifts need to be received. A gift is not a gift until you actually receive it. If it's just sitting under the Christmas tree, it's not yours until you go, thank you, I'll receive that. And the fifth thing about a gift is that it leads to a response. You know, when someone gives you something, you normally respond in a gratitude, thankfulness. Five things about gifts. Number one, gifts are an act of love. Two, gifts are not earned. Three, gifts cost the giver. Four, gifts need to be received. Five, gifts lead to a response. I asked my wife, Michelle, to read um, Luke chapter 2, where we see God giving his gift to us, and then we'll come back and look at each one of those things. Thank you, Shelley. Click a few. Okay, let's have a look at Luke. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. 
She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things up and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Awesome. Thanks, Shelley. You know, in that account, in the birth narrative from Luke, we see God's gift to us. God's gift. And it's his son. As Hannah said, it wasn't what they expected. They expected a Messiah king to come and rule and kick out the Romans and sit in in that throne and rescue them. But he was the rescuer king. He was the king who has come not just for the Israelites, but for all people. And he is God's gift to us. And as we look at these, as we look at Jesus as God's gift to us, we go back to these five things where, firstly, gifts are an act of love. In John 3.16, it says, For God so loved. You know, God loves you. You know, sometimes we hear that and it, we just water off a duck's back, you know, just, yeah, I know, whatever. But when we sometimes think about it, um, that actually God loves me and God loves you individually and he cares for you and he wants the best for you, God loves you. And the greatest thing God could ever do for you was to rescue you and save you from sin and death. And it says here, God gave his son, why? Because he loves you. You need to hear that. Some of you guys need to hear that today that God loves you. If you feel alone, if you feel unloved or unlovable, you need to hear today that God loves you. God loved you, the world, so much that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. The second thing about gifts, the gifts are not earned. You know, when you work, you get a wage. It's, It's what you deserve for your work. But gifts aren't like that. We give gifts because we love. We give gifts because we care. I received a gift um, just the other day from Martin, who, Martin, there you are. You love me, Martin. I feel loved and supported by you, brother. And he built, and he, he built this, like it's a bit of timber at the bottom, and then it's this metal piping that's like in an S, a bit like, the, like uh, under, a, under a sink. And at the top's a little succulent plant. And I stuck it out on my back table, and that's where it lives. And everyone that comes around, every, the last few days, people come around and go, what is that? I said, this awesome guy named Martin made me this gift. So when you come to my house, you'll see it. Thank you, Martin, for that. That wasn't earned. That was just because he loves me and wants to give me a gift. And in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, it says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's very clear. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so no one can, no one can boast about it. Look, look, look at what I've done. God's going to save me because I'm so good. Look what I've done. No, it doesn't work that way. Because it's not about a reward for good things we've done, but rather it is God's gift given to us. That's the second thing. Gifts are not earned. They're given out of love. The third thing, gifts, gifts cost the giver. You know, when you buy something for someone, you put your credit card or you re-gift or whatever it is, it costs you a little bit, but it takes energy, it takes time, it takes process, it takes running through the Christmas traffic and the parking stations and all that stuff to buy the gifts for the people we care about. It costs us something and so it is with God. It says here in 
um, 1 Peter 1, reading from the message, it says, It costs God plenty. I love how it says it. It costs God plenty to get you out of that dead end, empty headed life you grew up in. He paid with Christ's sacred blood, you know. He died like an unblemished sacrificial lamb. You know, when God sent his son Jesus, God gave us his very best. His very best. And that meant 30 years apart from his son while he was on earth and God was in heaven. But then when he went to that cross and he took the sin of the world upon himself, all that, his blood was shed. That cost God everything. And the reason he did it is because he loves me and he loves you. So that our sin could be forgiven, that we can have relationship with God, that we can have eternal life. Gifts cost the giver and it costs God everything. The third thing about gifts is that gifts need to be received. Again, a gift under a Christmas tree is not yours until you say, you beauty, here it is. One of the things that we do as a family, um, we often go to the beach um, down at Wanda and on the way back, the kids say, Dad, well, it's Aiden usually, Dad, can I have a frozen Coke, please? And I say, yeah, okay, we'll do that. Check the Macca's rewards. So on the Macca's app, they do the My Rewards. And like everything's like 30% the price that it normally is. And sometimes we have the $9, two Big Mac meals, which means two Big Macs, two small chips, and two small Cokes. And Joel says, I'll have that. And guess what? He eats all that by himself. Yeah? But those rewards are on your phone. They... They're not yours until you go for a drive through and you've got to pay for it there. And we're not talking about gifts being paid for here. But it's a reward on my phone, but I don't actually get the reward. Joel doesn't get his two Big Macs, two small chips, two, two Cokes. Aiden doesn't get his frozen Coke until you do your drive through Yeah, that's what he wants, but he wants that he, until we do the drive through And again, it's the same with God's gift for us. What Jesus has done for you is available for you. He's died for you. He wants to forgive you for your sin. He wants to give you eternal life. It's there, it's available, but it needs to be received. Check this scripture out from John 1, verse 12. It says this, Yet to all who did receive him, talking about Jesus, him is Jesus, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. It says clearly, yet to all who did receive him. You know what Christ, what Christ has done is available for all. But it's not yours until you say, yes, Jesus, I want it. I believe who you are, that you, that you are God's son, that you did die on the cross, that you did rise from the dead. I recognize I've got it wrong. Please forgive me. And I choose to follow you all the days of my life. It's then, it's through that prayer that we receive what God has for us. And the final thing about gifts is that they lead to a response. You know, when someone gives you a gift, you say, thank you. Or you might give them a big hug or a high five or shake their hand. You, you are appreciative. And God's gift is so great that it commands a much greater response. Check this out from Romans 12 again from the message. It says this. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. Your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking, and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. One more time. So here's what I want you to do. Normally we have, therefore, this is the NIV, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. You will be able to test and approve what God's will is. But here it says it differently. So here what I want you to, here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, your eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. You know, chapter 12 is a response to chapter 1 through 11, which is all around what God has done for you through Jesus, that he loved you, that he died for you, that he rose again. Now, as, as someone who's received it, live this way. Every part of your life, every part of your day, saying, God, I want to honor you. I want to celebrate you. I want to offer my life to you as a way of saying, thank you, God, a response to what you've done for us. So as we come to the end of this day, Christmas, not the end of the day, end of this service, you got a long, a long day ahead of you. Who's got Christmas lunch ahead of them? Who's got Christmas lunch and dinner? Yeah, we don't do that, thankfully. I don't know how you do lunch and, the, and then dinner. I don't know how that works. We, we do Christmas over two days, which is so yeah, on one day, then second day, which is not good for the better. Um, why did I say that? I don't know. 
as we, came to the, as we come to the end of this message, point four had gifts need to be received. Have you received God's gift, which is Jesus? Have you received it? You know, sometimes we receive it and then we, we are get off track and we wander away. And we need to come back to that place and say, God, I'm going to honor you with my life. And if you're here today and you want to commit your life to Jesus, if you say, Jesus, I mean, I want to receive you as my Savior, as my Lord, I'm going to pray a prayer and I want you to pray it after me. And if you're a young person and you're not normally in the service, we normally do this on a Sunday. We give people the opportunity to become a follower of Jesus, to become a Christian. And if you want to do that, you can pray this prayer too. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he died for me and rose from the dead. God, I'm sorry for my wrongdoing. Please forgive me. I choose to follow Jesus all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you just pray that prayer, you have received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. You're now a child of God. You belong to him. And as a child of God, oh, Matt, you've lost back one. (laughs) Um, As a child of God, the fifth point was respond. And the response is, yes, thank you, God. But it's living a life that pleases him. And I encourage you to do that. We'll pray, and then we'll close. Father, I want to thank you for each one who's made the decision to follow Jesus. Father, we pray that you would give us a desire and a passion to live a life that pleases you, that we will respond in a way that's honoring, where we're offering all of us to you, God. And on this day, we'll take opportunities to share your love with others and with family who don't know you, that we would act in a way, that we would speak in a way, that we would share the message of Jesus, your great, the greatest gift mankind's ever been given, and that is Jesus. We thank you, Father. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for being part of our Christmas service. We're going to have a prayer team at the front if you'd like prayer. Otherwise, go spend time with family, friends, whatever you're doing. God bless you. Thanks for being part of it. Amen. Thanks so much for checking out this message. LifeGate Church has people meeting in person and online in many different locations. And we'd love to help you get connected. My name is Andrew and I lead our online team here at LifeGate Church and it's our job to do exactly that. We'd love to support you, uh, help you get connected and find out how you can take your next steps. So why don't you head to lifegate.org.au slash online and we'd love to find out more about you and how we can serve you as a church. Thanks for checking out this message and we'll catch you soon.